Good afternoon. Welcome to Sports Another But Sports with Kent Sterling for Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. Brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill still doing emergency work on dental patients at Today's Dentistry. Give him a call if you've got a dental emergency. 317-849-2933. Let's talk about sports a little bit. There's still stuff to talk about. How about Logan Duncan? Of Cincinnati Moeller, 6'9", a kid who was playing really good basketball for a team that was 26-1 and in Ohio before the season was scuttled. He committed to Indiana University today. So Indiana gets its second commitment in the class of 2021 along with Christian Lander. Now Lander may reclass into the class of 2010, which would make Duncan the only commit to this point in the class of 2021. He's rated 80th overall in the country by 24-7 sports. What that means to you, I have no idea. He's long. He is reasonably athletic. He's got a great brain. He's got a terrific basketball IQ. And as we continue to see people commit to Indiana University, we can see what kind of team uh, Archie Miller is trying to build. He's trying to build one with great basketball IQ, great overall IQ, some athleticism, and a real hunger to play defense. And that, you know what, if he continues to do this and you continue to get guys like Duncan and like Lander and like Leal and and those guys, you could wind up having a pretty damn successful basketball program. He is he is recruiting to a mold. All right. He's not just he's not just recruiting and getting commitments from wildly talented guys and then trying to cobble them together into a team. He's not doing that. That's the Tom Crean playbook where he's going out and getting the most talented players he can, whether they fit together or not. That is a question to be answered down the line for a guy like Tom Crean. For Archie Miller, I think it's a little bit different. I think he's trying to find guys who can play together. And this kid looks to be somebody who could have played at, let's say, a Stanford, right? Leal, a kid who had an offer at Stanford that he com- uh, considered quite highly. So what you're doing, you're putting together a lot of smart guys. I like smart basketball players. People in Indiana like smart basketball players. We also like shooters, too, and I don't know where the hell or you're going to get points on this team. But you're going to have a tough-minded defensive team. You're going to have a really, really smart team. And if you got those two things, you can go to war with guys. Of the 13 recruits that Archie Miller has gotten commitments from to play at Indiana in the four classes, two that he's had and two that he's got coming, the class of 20 and 21, 13 kids, nine from the state of Indiana, two from Ohio, one from Pennsylvania, and one Jordan Geronimo from New Hampshire by way of New Jersey, and it could be the other way around. The kids from New Jersey went to prep school in New Hampshire. He's another guy, really, really smart, terrific GPA. I like that kind of guy. I like people who are going to succeed both in the classroom and on the basketball court. That seems to be the Indiana playbook. Go get Indiana guys to play Indiana basketball the Indiana way. I like it, I like it, I like it. All right, let's talk about Purdue. Matt Harms is gone. He's transferring. He's entered the transfer portal. He's going to be a grad-eligible senior this coming year, and he's going to play somewhere other than West Lafayette, and I don't think it's a big deal for Purdue. Name the last, maybe it was Tom Burleson with NC State, the last starter for a team who was 7'3 or taller. Matt Harms is 7'3". All right, and Matt Harms, I think as good a rim protector as he was, I think he was a guy who really kind of cost Purdue. Not so much two years ago when you had an elite-level scorer like Carson Edwards or his freshman year when you had Haas and you had Vincent Edwards and you had Dakota Mathias and and also Carson Edwards and and those guys. That was a good team, and you could you could afford – to have a kid like Harms down on the block who wasn't really an option in, this, in the offensive set of that team. I think you could, you could afford to have him around, but given who Purdue became this past year and you were looking for Harms to kind of up his game a little bit from an offensive perspective, he just didn't get that done. And so he's leaving. I don't think it's a big deal for Matt uh, Painter. I think Matt Painter's going to sleep just fine tonight knowing that Matt Harms is not going to be a part of that team. His brand was bigger than his play. He had the hair. He had the celebrations. What he didn't have was an ability to put the ball in a hole. 
And other than being able to block and alter shots on the defensive end, he was really a minus player in virtually everything else. So I don't think it's that big a deal. And if if Purdue fans are upset about it, I don't think they should be. So Matt Harms, adios, no problem. They're talking about playing Major League Baseball games in front of no fans. That doesn't bother me. NBA games in front of no fans. I was watching ESPN earlier today, and Chris Berman was saying, oh, I'm against sporting events without fans. Why? What the hell do we care? What are you out of your mind? Look, I go to a Cubs game occasionally. I go to a lot of Pacers games, go to a lot of Colts games. Those are the games I care whether there are fans. The other games, when I'm sitting at home watching on TV, I could give, I, I could care less. It doesn't matter whether there are fans. What? I care that other people are sitting in an arena watching the same game that I'm watching on TV. Why? Does that make any sense to anyone? I want to watch sports on TV. And if that means no fans, I'm absolutely fine with that. I'm tired of watching Rocket Ball. Rocket Ball. It's a bunch of guys. They got the headsets on. They got the controllers. They're playing some damn game where they, they drive little vehicles up walls and they try to hit the Rocket Ball into a goal. It's kind of like soccer on steroids, but electronic. I don't need to watch this. What am I watching other people play video games for, for God's sake? I want to watch real people play real games. That's what I want. Can we please have some of that? And if it means not having fans to get that to happen, oh, I'm fine with that. Way fine with that. We got people in this town, and we all know who they are. Uh, there's one uh, specific guy, a high-profile guy in town with a radio show, who's betting on Russian ping pong. That's what he's doing. That's how much he misses sports. On the weekends, I'm watching uh, America's Day at the Races. There are two thoroughbred uh, tracks open in this country. They're running the horses, and I'm sitting here and watching like I got money on these races. Why? Because it's there. Because it's live. It's not the 2006 game between the Bulls and the, the Magic. It's not, you know, it's not the Pacers in 2013. It, it, I don't want to watch any of those games. Those games already happened. I know what, I know what the result was. I don't need to watch those games. I want to watch live stuff happen today. And if that means no fans, that means no fans, and I got no problem with it. Let's get going. Now, let's get going, but let's not put anybody at risk. All right? Now, we all know that. We can all agree on that, right? We don't want anybody, we don't want one more person to die of the coronavirus than absolutely has every death that we can prevent, every infection that we can prevent. We should work really, really hard to prevent all of us. Social distancing, hunkering down, all of that stuff. Wash your hands like you're a surgeon, for God's sake, okay? Do all of that stuff, but please, if it can be conducted safely, give me live sporting events on my television and do it right the hell now. Can you believe that last night would have been the national championship game in college basketball and this weekend? would be Masters weekend, and we don't get any of that. The Masters has been delayed till November. The Indy 500 has been delayed until August. We've got a Grand Prix and the Brickyard 400 on 4th of July weekend. Hopefully that comes to pass. Let's end this as quickly as possible. Be disciplined in how we attack it as individuals with the, the kind of mitigation that Dr. Fauci and Dr. Burks talk about, be real responsible about it, and let's move on from this. And if that means putting guys in dormitories in Phoenix and Mesa, Arizona, and having them play baseball in front of nobody, I am absolutely perfectly fine with that. Let's get people on the golf course, and let's have events. So we've got to, I've got right now on my TV, you know it's on, Caddyshack. Caddyshack, you got Danny Newman, who's subbed in for Al Chervik. He's paired up with Ty, and they're taking on Judge Schmales and Dr. Beeper. And in the end, Bill Murray is going to set off a big explosion, and Danny Noonan's birdie putt is going to roll into the cup, and Rodney Dangerfield is going to look at all the people celebrating Danny Noonan's putt going in, and he's going to say, hey, we're all going to get laid. That happens every time I watch. I watched it yesterday, too. You know what else I'm watching? I'm watching Hogan's Heroes. 
Why? Because it's on. And I, I, I get about enough of uh, I find out what's going on with the coronavirus, and then I go away. I don't need to watch 12 hours of coronavirus coverage. Not enough is changing, you know, to make it worth my while to continue to tune in and tune in and tune in. I got to take a break from this stuff. So it's uh, A Few Good Men, which is on repeatedly. Caddyshack, which is on all the time. Stripes, which is on if Caddyshack's not on, it seems like. And... Every once in a while, I watch guys play video games. This is what my life has become. Uh, also, we want to uh, acknowledge the passing of the great Al Kaline. Al Kaline, one of the greatest ever to play baseball and, and one of the Mount Rushmore guys for the Detroit Tigers. You talk about the Detroit Tigers, who are you talking about? You're talking about Ty Cobb, Charlie Geringer, Hank Greenberg, and Al Kaline. Then you've got kind of a sub uh, sort of a uh, Mount Rushmore, kind of a Mount Rushmore Jr. with with Tiger players, including maybe Norm Cash, right? Uh, y- y- Jim Northrup, maybe uh, Alan Trammell, Lou Whitaker. If you want to put Miguel Cabrera in there, you can do that. Justin Verlander, but Verlander left. So I, I tend to only really acknowledge guys who spent the vast majority of their career with one team, if not all of them, and Al Kaline spent all 22 years as, uh, as a Detroit Tiger, one of the best right fielders in the history of the game, a guy who, who hit the 3,000 hit mark and the 1,500 RBI mark, one of seven to do that. Not a guy that you talk about very much. You know, when it comes to who are the baseball greats of the 60s and 70s, you're going to talk about Mays, Banks, Aaron. You're going to talk about um, Pete Rose, certainly, Johnny Bench, certainly. And, and a lot of people are going to forget all about uh, Al Kaline, but certainly one of the best to ever play the game certainly is a member of the Detroit Tigers. Tomorrow morning, Breakfast with Kent, bright and early, 8 o'clock on Facebook Live, about 8.15 on Periscope and Twitter. And then we also do it on YouTube as well immediately thereafter. The one on YouTube, a little bit shorter for for people who are in a bit of a hurry. The others are about 10 minutes, 12 minutes each. We talk about sports, nothing but sports. That's what we do. And then a little bit later in the morning, I read a chapter from Oops, my book, uh, the Art of Learning from Mistakes and Adventures, a chapter a day on both Facebook Live and Periscope slash Twitter. And it's all kinds of fun because, you know, you and I both, we're trying to, we're trying to get through this hunkering down phase of fighting the coronavirus. And that means sitting at home and trying to find something to do. And we can't play Yahtzee all day by ourselves, can we? <laughs> Wouldn't that be sad? You know, so I don't know. If you enjoy them, great. Read the book, enjoy the book, or enjoy me reading the book, whatever you want. And then uh, in the morning, we talk about sports breakfast with Kent. And i got to tell you the truth, some afternoons, I don't do the sports and other but sports. Unless there's sports news to discuss, we don't do it. So there you go. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Call Dr. Mike O'Neill, doing emergency work at this point at 317-849-2933.